All right, volumes by known cross-sections. It's a different way to generate volumes or, or three-dimensional solids in calculus. We're not going to be rotating our graphs anymore to generate our solids. What I'm going to do this time is I'm going to give you the shape of a base and tell you what the cross-section is. Uh, now, even though we are generating the solids in a different way, the idea and the approach for finding the volume is still the same. We're going to need to find what the shape of the cross-section is, which is going to be easy because that's part of the problem. It'll be given to you. We need to determine whether we're looking at a dx or a dy problem. Uh, find the formula for the area of the cross-section, which is usually going to be pretty easy. And uh, then we need to set up the integral. We'll have to write that formula, whether it's a, a circle or a square, but we need to write that formula in terms of the functions given. Then we'll set up the integral that finds the volume. And for these problems, I'm not going to actually find the actual answer. I'm just going to set up the integral and stop. And I'm going to assume that since we've been doing definite integrals for over a month now, that you will be able to um, actually evaluate these integrals on your own. So let's look at the first problem. What we have is a... Uh, a solid, the base is a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, which is a ra uh, circle with radius, oh man, this is being weird. I don't want to write with the eraser. It's a circle with radius 2. Hang on, I have to fix this. It's going to drive me crazy. Okay, let's try this again. Um, so we have a circle with radius 2, and uh, anytime I cut this thing, when I cut this perpendicular to the x-axis, so if I were to cut this, perpendicular to the x-axis, everywhere I cut it, I'm going to get a square. Now the square is hard to see because right now the square is coming out off the screen at you and all you can see is the edge. But I'm going to try to 3D-ify this. Now just imagine this square is actually coming off the screen at you and this square is pointing at you. Anywhere we cut this, we get a square that's pointing up off the screen at you. When I start right over here, we just have little bitty squares. So I have a little square coming off the screen at you. Uh, it's really hard to visualize this, so I do have a program that can help you maybe see what's happening here. And so here's our circle, radius 2, and we have our cross sections. Oh, where are my cross sections? Uh, there. So we have our cross sections, and those are squares that you can't see when you're looking at the top of the region, but if I could lay this thing back and let it kind of sit flat, those squares you'll be able to see come up off the, the circle. So let's lay it flat, and there you can see the square cross sections. When it's sitting up and looking at the top, you can't tell, but as it lays flat, you can see those square cross sections. And what it ends up doing is creating this three-dimensional shape. When we look at it from the top, it's a circle, but when it lays flat, you can kind of see the squares. And if you remember, the, the idea behind finding the volume of any solid is you have to find the cross section, and then you sweep across that cross section through the solid. So here we have a square starting from left to right. That square sweeps through the solid. And if we add up the area of all of those squares, if we add up all those areas, those areas combine to give you the volume of the entire solid. And that's what we're going to have to do. So let me get this out of the way. And we'll set up this problem. So we have a square. And as I said earlier, oh, man, now it's not working again. Why is this being so finicky? Okay, so we have squares. Uh, and I know that the formula for the area of a square is whatever the side length is squared. Since my cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis and I'm traveling from left to right as I slide that square across, this is a dx. And dx means I need to take this equation and get it in terms of x. So I'm going to solve for y, which will give me the plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared. And that's the equation of this whole circle. The top half, you have to do this in a different color. The top half is the equation positive root 4 minus x squared. And the bottom one is the equation negative root. 4 minus x squared. Okay. So there's my formula. Now I've got to find a formula for the side length of a square. My side length goes all the way from this curve down to this one. There's a couple of ways you can do this, but that side length ends up being twice the square root of 4 minus x squared. Uh, one way you could do that is you could think, well, this right here 
is half the side lengths, and so I'll just double the distance from to do grid 4 minus x squared. Or you could do top curve minus bottom curve. And if I did radical minus that negative one, you end up with two of them. So there is the formula for the side length, and then I'll roll that into an integral, the antiderivative of this squared. So that's my side length squared. And I need to add up all of those areas when I start over here on the far left. And since this is a radius of two, I'm going to go from negative two to positive two. And this integral will find the, um, <coughs> that integral will find your uh, volume of the solid. Okay, and I decided to go ahead and work this problem out. So uh, as I told you, I was just going to set it up. But for those of you who want to work it out and see if you can do the antiderivative, this is your answer. I didn't clean it up. Uh, I left it completely unsimplified down here when I plugged in my limits of integration. But there you go. That's number one. Let's try this one. Um, we have the curve square root of x, x equals 4 and y equals 0. So this is our region right here under this uh, square root function. And cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, okay, same type cross sections we were doing just a minute ago. So we're cutting this perpendicular to the x-axis. And those shapes are semicircles with diameters on the region. So this is going to be a semicircle. Ooh, I get to use this. I've never used this tool before. Ah, oh, geez, maybe that's why. Uh, yep, I'm not going to try to use that arc anymore. That was dumb. Okay. Uh, so we have semicircles, and this semicircle is actually coming up off the paper at me, or off the screen at us here. Um, if I cut it right here, that's just going to be a really small semicircle. If I cut it over here, we're going to have a much larger semicircle. And so these are the shapes of our cross sections. Oh, geez. That was ugly. Okay, whatever. All right, so my cross section is a semicircle, and the area of a semicircle uh, is just a circle divided by 2, so 1 half pi r squared. Now what I have to do is find the formula uh, for the radius. So my radius, let's see, of this circle, radius, and this is going to be a little bit tricky, radius is this distance. It's half of the distance to the function itself. So my radius, if this whole distance, if the diameter is going to the square root of x, my radius is going to be the square root of x divided by 2. And then we will take this and roll it into the integral. Uh, so it's the antiderivative of 1 half pi r, which is square root of x over 2 squared dx. Um, and we'll come back and tackle the limits of integration. Actually, let's go ahead and do those. Uh, my first cross section starts right here at x equals 0. And it ends, we're going to slide that cross section over until we get to x equals 4. Uh, and this is a dx problem because I am traveling from left to right. So maybe I need to specify that we're looking at a dx function. Uh, and this integral would find your, uh, the area of this or the volume of this solid. Uh, let me pause it and I'll work this one out again. And there you go. There's your solution to this one. Actually, ends up being uber sexy. I mean, the answer is just pi, which is awesome. But anyway, so there we go. We found the uh, we found the cross section, found a formula for its area, and then we added up. We did the integral of all of those areas from zero to four. I think I have one more example. Uh, here's the last one. We have the curve y equals x cubed, x equals two, and y equals zero. So we're looking at this region. Now we're doing cross sections perpendicular to, and that is not what I meant to do. I meant for this to be perpendicular to the y-axis. Let me change that. <laughs> Take that. Perpendicular to the y-axis. So now when I cut this, I'm now cutting this thing left and right. And as I cut it, doesn't matter where I cut it, I'm going to get an equilateral triangle that's coming up off the paper or off the screen at us. Everywhere I cut this, I'm going to have an equilateral triangle. Uh, now this one, since my cross sections are horizontal, I'm going to be stacking my cross sections up. So I'm going to start at zero, and then I'm going to move up until I get to this point. And that y coordinate, if x is two, two cubed is eight. So I'm going to go from zero to eight, and I need to add up the areas of all of these equilateral triangles. Um, it is a dy problem. 
the area of an equilateral triangle is side squared root 3 all over 4. Um, or you could write that as root 3 over 4 times side squared, and I think I'm going to prefer it that way. And now we just have to find a formula for the length of, a, of this side. Uh, since this is a dy problem, this is going to make it a little bit ugly. Since this is a dy problem, I need to solve this equation for x and get it in terms of y. So x is the cube root of y. And my side length, the side length is the distance from this point right here to this point right here. Here is the side length. And the distance between any two points, it's either top minus bottom, or in this case, it's right minus left. So my side length is going to be my right point, which is on the curve x equals 2, minus my left point, which is on the curve x equals cube root of y. And then once I get all that information, I can throw it into my antiderivative. I'll take all that. This is going to be the antiderivative of the square root of 3 over 4 times my side length squared, but my side length is 2 minus the cube root of y dy, and then we're going to add up all of those areas, starting at a y-coordinate of 0, right down here, and we'll stack them up until we get to that very top, which is at 8. So there is your integral that will find the volume of this solid. Uh, and then I'm going to clean it up here and work it out to give you the answer. All right, and there's our worked out solution for this volume. So uh, even though it's a little bit weird and it's hard to visualize the solids, the the idea is still the same. You find the, the cross-section, you find the area of the cross-section, and then you add those areas as you sweep the cross-section across your solid.